Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. White flowers and watercolor just go together. The layers of transparency, the colors, the reflections, it's just beautiful. This peony in my garden has been in my family for several generations. It's absolutely stunning. Let's paint. I'm painting on gorgeous twin rocker paper, splashing on some quinacridone red right away. I'm using my Isabee brush. I want um, everything very loose in the background, but there are a couple edges I want to go around quite neatly with the white flower. I'm starting off negative painting, as I usually do with white flowers, and I want a pastel -y background to start. I don't want to go as dark as I'm going to get from the beginning because I want to leave myself room to not make it extremely dark. I'm not sure how dark I want to make it until I've painted the flower. You never paint darkest darks right from the start. You may paint some medium darks, say a 7 on a value scale of 10, but you never go down to a 10. Because when you have the one white of the paper to start with, then you can't gauge things well. Most of your painting is going to be, say, a four to a six, and you don't know exactly how that's going to be until you get started. It may turn out that you want most of your painting to be a two or a three, in which case a dark dark is really going to show up and you want to limit it. So exactly where you're going to be on that value scale, exactly where the middle part you don't know until you've started painting. So I usually, on a white flower, I paint all around. White flowers are terrific to paint in watercolors. They're just amazing. And I usually start with negative painting the white flower. And where I'm focusing on in this video, since I've blurred through the beginning of the background, but you've seen me do that before. So where I'm focusing is the layering of the petals. A white flower to me needs multiple layers in watercolor. You want a translucent color. You want everything very, very soft, very translucent, but you have to have those hard edges to have the definition of flower. Otherwise, you're just looking at kind of a muddy colored blur. <laughs> so I start with some of the whites because I want to have the background there. I want to have the glowing background in that translucent color. Um, phthalo blue, I've dulled it slightly with a little bit of red and um, because I don't want the knock your socks off bright of a phthalo blue. I know I don't usually dull colors before, but you know, every guideline's meant to be broken. So here we go. And um, phthalo blue is a very translucent color. It's also a little bit difficult to use because once it's there, it's extremely staining. You have to, so I'm building this up in many, many layers. But the layers are what makes that translucency and how you can see the movements of the petals and all of that. So as you noticed, I let the yellow dry before I started painting the blue on. That's important if you don't want green. Um, you notice that where it's brightest, it still ends up with the greenish tinge, but that's all right because the translucence of the white flower will show the greens of the leaves behind it. White flowers are going to show whatever's around them. They're going to reflect and they're going to be translucent. I'm definitely keeping that flower bud out because, okay, I've done some more layers here and now it's time to make the center part just glow. So a little bit of quinacridone gold so I have the orangey gold instead of a greeny gold. I don't want any greens anywhere near the center of the flower. That's very critical for this particular painting. If I start getting greens in there, it's not going to have that glow. At least not the one I want. Now the greens on that petals there, that's fine. 
I want to soften them slightly. I want some purples. I want some muted shadow colors, but it's going to have some greens in there because of the, that translucence. The center part, you know, this is probably, I probably should have painted that and then stopped. Let it go. Um, a lot of times when I'm painting white flowers, I will soften some edges with my brush. I actually, um, if you're going to do a lot of it, pick up your synthetic brush if you happen to have one, because that's better for softening. The bristles are stiffer than a, um, sable like this. Sable have very soft bristles, so they're not good with working with like that. Um, before you do too much softening, paint the bulk of your painting because once you have rubbed it in area, especially if you're getting in there with a rag, you can't recover it. The paint, uh, a brush, you can, but... Um, so when you're doing a flower, most of everything is, uh, there's the harsh edges right at the edges of the petals and then it softens as it goes back into the petals where it meets the stem. So abrupt, then transition. And I like doing that not I like doing that some with floating in some water and I like doing that some as I paint it and I like doing that some by blurring it with the brush. Now the background is a little bit pastel -y. I want the rich darks but I don't want brown darks with this I want blue darks. Um, so I'm using some ultramarine blue and really deepening that I want to do it with not many harsh edges in the background because that's very distracting. Even um, the leaves, which are pointing towards the flower, they're pointing where I want them to go, but those lines are still a little bit distracting. So I want to soften the background. I'm using the ultra ultramarine blue because it's a very cool blue. And that's important because it's the warm center. That's my center of interest. So it's a cool surrounding warm. And the warm is just a spot. And that's what makes that trick of the flower looks like it's glowing. Is the warm is concentrated. I want it very, very dark. And if you have something very dark here, and you also know that you're going to need to soften some of those edges, just paint right up to them and notice that is, that's just way too crisp. It's going to distract. I, I have too much focus there and my center of interest is all blurred and this, this isn't working. So I'm going to wait for it to dry and then I'm going to blur those petals. So don't worry. It'll get there. I really love just floating the colors into another for something like this. It makes for a very soft background and it's fun to do. So more of the cool, cool darks and yeah, that was crayons. Just move around your painting. Pull in these colors. It That is almost the same value as the peony. So while I do want some lights over there, I'm using some cobalt blue. I'm softening it with some splatter. I want it blurred, out of focus, soft. It's really this gorgeous gar that make a beautiful painting in its own right, but it's not the center of this painting. And that's the key is know what your focus is, direct all of the attention towards your focus. Some more darks, get some nice dark phthalo green. Thalo green, all the thalos are extremely staining. So 
Use them only where you're sure. And don't wear your best clothes to paint in. <laughs> I still have those bright whites up at the top and and I still want them there. Um, the red, I want to dull down the white a little bit, but I still want a nice warm, bright glow over on that side. See, I'm just moving around and adding a little bit more dark, especially right around the flower, because that's where my center of interest is. Always direct all of your attention, center of interest. And you see with these strong darks, now the peony is really getting there. Azo Yellow is a great finishing touch to wash like this because you put it in, it has the neat separating graininess and kind of floats on the surface. It makes it look like there are leaves back there and there's interesting things back there, but you're not really painting every detail because you don't want to paint every detail. And since I used it on the leaves earlier, that flows beautifully because, hey, maybe there's some more leaves back there. There, it's important to know which colors will kind of sit down on the bottom of a wash and which ones will float to the top and have some interesting effects. They're both useful. You just need to know when to use which. So play with the brush and a scrap of paper for that. I always have a box of rags for everything. When I paint on location, I use paper towels usually, but rags are much nicer to paint with. Just those strong darks in there are really making it come out. Too much detail in that peony bud will pull my attention away. I just want a little bit, just so you can tell what it is, barely. And so ultramarine dulled down with a little bit of Quin Gold. Ultramarine um, pink dulled down. And a little bit of the Thalo Blue, because I've used both those colors earlier. And um, I'm wearing a very soft gray. Now, when I do mix on my palette, which is pretty unusual for me, but you never, you never ignore a technique, I will only mix a very small amount at any time and usually leave the possibility of mixing on the paper. The quinacridone red here for those little petals that just... They're just tinged with this bright red. Really gorgeous. I wish you could see these flowers. They're just, they're beautiful. I have a reference photo on my website at paintingwatercolor.com. So if you want to paint along with this, I would love it. Um, post your paintings on Instagram with the hashtag paintingwatercolor. And it would be great if we could all have fun painting together. I knew I would add these little red petals because they're an important part of the peony. However, they're great because they draw my attention to the center of interest where I want it to be. Little bright red details. Now, I have used the reds in other places in the painting, so they're not going to look cut out, which bright wet red um, petals on a white flower could very easily look cut out. Um, they just draw my attention right into the center of interest. And I have a beautiful peony painting. I hope very much that this inspires you to paint some beautiful white flowers, white flowers and watercolor perfect. And I can't wait to see what you do. 
If you'd like to see more information on this, please visit my website. I have a link to the reference photo and the lessons in the description. Please subscribe if you've liked this painting and check out my other YouTube videos. Lots of flowers. Thanks a lot for watching. Happy painting.